Howdy, fellow YouTubers. My name is Mo. I'm straight. Today, I have some printer bot stuff that I'm going to show you. This is a tutorial that will show you how to set it up for the very first time. If you are working on Windows 7 or Vista or whatever, you're going to need to come over here to the printer bot project. Simple Metal, just copy that whatever into your address bar, and it'll bring you here. You can download the drivers, quote unquote. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but makes your print makes your computer recognize your printer. So once you've downloaded that, you're also going to want to download this first Cube STL, and then we will be getting on our way. If you haven't watched this video down in the description, this is not my video, but this is a guy who does a video of how to set up the printer and I would highly suggest it to anyone this is gonna cover some of the stuff that he didn't cover in that video and I'm just gonna show you that here today so as that guy did in his video our selective uh, printer thing is going to be Cura. Cura is a great program there's only one thing that I've noticed that it's really bad at but that doesn't really matter if we're just starting in 3d printing so I just plugged in my printer bot simple into this computer this is actually not the computer that I used to to print with it but this computer is able to record so <laughs> I choose this computer okay so now that we have done that you'll see right here it is using com3 you're gonna want to remember that if you are not using Cura but Cura is smart enough that it knows what's going on so we're gonna come in here to Cura and if you haven't done this before it'll it'll ask you for a setup and you just you know you select the printer bot and then whatever printer bot you're using blah 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 we're going to load in the first cube, and there is our first cube. Now, a really cool thing that Cura does that not a whole lot of other programs do is that it'll show you how much, how many grams it's going to be using in the current setup. Also, if you were to go back to the settings, where was that? Preferences, and come here to the cost. Mine was twenty-four dollars and fifty cents, approximately, for one kilogram of material, and it'll tell you right then and there how much something will cost if you print it so that's a really cool thing that this program does that not a whole lot of other programs do a uh, program like repeteer which is what printer bot wants you to use because you know they're not going to come out and say oh hey you know cura might be better but you know they're competitors of ours anyway whole another subject for another day but overall this is probably one of the easiest programs that you'll find to use with your 3d printer we're going to come up here to print with USB. Right now, it is connecting to my printer, and you'll see it's connected. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but I'm gonna... We're gonna read some settings on the printer bot. What you're gonna do is you're gonna type in F5 or M501, <laughs> and now this will ping the motherboard on the printer bot, on the 3D printer, and it'll tell you all the settings that it has, and right here, is the one that you're, you're gonna want to focus on now in that video I told you to watch earlier I hope you watched it uh, it's where he set the offset which is this m212 command right here and you'll notice that mine are zero and that's because I've experimented with mine and I have set Z just right for how my printer is set up because everyone's printer is different you're gonna print about 10 test cubes and if you don't well then you mu you sir have a very lucky printer and is set perfectly right now for some reason mine on the X it was set to 25 and if you want to change anything like that like say that I wanted to move the Z offset oh let me explain what the offset is so what we're essentially doing here is we're telling the printer that whenever you start a print you're gonna want to start this much over or this much under when you print and so that's very useful when the computer pings the printer and ask hey what is your z-axis at then it'll ping back and say oh I'm at zero right now but if you were to set an offset of say m212 z 0 0.1 or no yeah one enter something you're gonna have to do after every 212 m212 command make sure that everything's capitalized if it's not capitalized it'll freak out something that i've noticed about uh, my printer in particularly is that every time i do this i have to hit an m500 command and what that does is it saves and then we're going to hit m501 to save and you'll see that it saved right there 
So if we were to start printing, it would print in point one. Now, in the video I asked you to watch earlier, when he said, you know, use a piece of paper as a judgment call, that is usually way too short. So you're going to want to bump it up like point two millimeters above what that is. But I've, I've zeroed mine in and my Z coordinate should be zero. So I'm going to set that back up again. So we're M212, capital Z, zero, enter, capital M, 500, enter, capital M, 501 to view. And there it is. So now your printer will, no matter what computer you plug it into, it will always do that. These settings are saved on the motherboard of the printer. So no matter what thing you're using, this will help. So something else that a lot of people don't think of is that sometimes the software doesn't know exactly what your printer set up to. Uh, when I say this, I had a print the other day where I started printing and the printer stripped out one of the belts. It, it didn't it didn't hurt it, but you could audibly hear the cook, 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 cook of it stripping out the belt and I'm not sure exactly why it did this, but my X right here on the 212 command was set to 25. So anytime that it would start a print, it would move over 25 millimeters, which is, that's, that's not okay. Something that I noticed that that dude missed in his video, or at least I didn't get, and I thought that I could explain a little bit better, was that these offsets only take place when you start a print. So if you're just hitting this home button, it's just homing the axes to make sure that you don't overstrip something or something of that nature. So these offsets only take place when it starts. So if you're testing with a piece of paper, say that you set the Z down 0.1, well you have to come here to the tooltip and bring it down by 0.1. Mine won't do it right now because my offset won't let it. So one of the other things about 3D printing is when you get your printer, you usually get like a test spool. Do not leave your printer unattended while you are using this test spool until you have some kind of rack system that will relieve the tension off of the filament as it's going into your machine. So what I mean by this is when you have a just an empty spool of something of that nature, or pretty much any spool, you actually have to spin the spool as it's going into the machine or else it is not going to relieve pressure on the filament and it will tangle up and it won't feed into your machine. And this is something that you have to solve by either printing yourself one like I did or buying one or making one yourself out of some household things and it's just something that will help feed the filament into your machine while relieving the tension at the same time now until you do that I have found that the best way to do it is to put the filament on the ground or such and face it away from the printer so that way when it pulls the filament into the machine the roll will start rolling away from the printer and that and that comes apart where you're not going to want to leave your printer unattended because if that gets too far away it hits a wall or something then it's just going to be tugging and it'll snap your filament or something even worse could happen now what i did at the very first was when i got the just the the spool that didn't have anything plastic in the middle it was just like an open spool I just let it hang there and that wasn't the greatest idea because I left it for like 30 minutes and because there was nothing that was relieving the tension when I came back uh, in like an hour or so it was all tangled up and it stopped the filament from going in the machine grinded on the filament to a point where it was unusable and I just had to cut it off and refeed it into the machine so that is always something that you have to be aware of especially if you're new to 3d printing another thing is that you you're never gonna want to put your filament behind the 3d printer unless you have some kind of spooling system because when it whenever I hit these home buttons especially in my uh, printer bot what it will do is it will move the axis back and it'll hit a button and if that filament somehow gets in between those buttons it'll just keep grinding and grinding and grinding until it's like whoa what's going on and it will make an audible noise and I I went for like an hour every time it would home like the y-axis which is the one on the stem that 
the filament was blocking because it was behind the machine it wouldn't hit that sensor and it would just keep going and going and going and so that is definitely something that you have to make sure that you do not do make sure that your filament is in a correct place preferably in front of your machine so that it stays away from the moving parts so if you got a printer bot like I did, you need a spooling system. And there's a great spooling system online that you can go download that is kind of specifically made for printer bot. And it prints out very simply and anyone can do it who has a 3D printer. I will make sure to link it down below. The one that is specifically made for the printer has two little holes in the bottom that clips to the top of the printer bot. So that way your printer is above what you're doing and you'll have less hard of a time for it going into the machine. Now something about that design that I thought was goofy is why do I have to have a little handle on the side? That doesn't seem like a big deal. It really is. It helps the filament not fall off of the rack. Every part's in the picture that I'm going to show you. You need to print out all of those or else it, it won't function as it needs to be. So I'm just about done with my video. I've said everything that I felt that I've needed to say. Uh, Kura, all right. Cura is a great program. It is a fantastic program. There is only one thing that this program is atrocious at, and that is support material. If you're new to 3D printing, you probably don't know all of the programs, but Repetier is the other well-known program for this, and Repetier has a built-in system for a slicer called Slicer. And a slicer in 3D printing is a piece of software that will do this to whatever object you have and what this is is this is every layer that my 3d printer will print when it prints it out and the one that Cura has is called the Cura engine and Repetier does have a Cura engine setting but it is atrocious at support material and if you don't know what support material is it's basically when you have a complex object such as, where is it? Finished projects, binding of Isaac, Isaac. Okay, so this is a model that I created. It's a binding of Isaac character that I was making for a friend. And some things that went wrong with it in Kura is that, especially right here, you'll notice that when it starts printing on, say, come on. When it starts printing on this layer, you'll notice that it just starts putting stuff out here in the middle of nowhere. And you cannot do that with 3D printing. That's the whole point of support material is that if you're trying to print in open space, it'll just come out of the machine. It won't hit anything. And you'll just have some empty dead filament just kind of laying there. And you'll notice that right there, it just starts printing out here where it has no support whatsoever. And this is support material specifically made to hold up the hand of Isaac. Because when I modeled him, wasn't really thinking about support material, whatever. And so we have one on this side and this side. Kura is awful at this. And not to mention that Kura is really bad about making your support material stick to your object. And so I would highly suggest using a different program if you have a file that requires you to have support material. Now the only downside to using Repetier with Slicer is that it takes forever for you to be able to slice anything. It's like Make sure that you get your settings right the first time before he, you do that because it'll be three or four minutes before it's done slicing. Unlike this program where I can go back here, I can move him around, whatever. I don't know what's going on there. But I can move him right here and you'll see up here it's doing its little dealy dealy. And it's done. If that was to be done in Slicer, it would take three or four minutes. Slicer is definitely a better program than this program when it comes to support material. For everything else, this program is pretty freaking awesome. It has an easy to use interface. There's almost nothing about it that is super awful. But other, other than the support material thing, that's the only problem that I really have with this software. Everything else, the fact that it tells you how many grams you have, how much money it'll cost, it's a great overall program. If you have any other questions about 3D printing, please leave your question in your comment in the comment section below. If you made it this part of the video, please put the word bacteria in your comment in the comment section below so that I know that you watch the video all the way to the end and are the best viewer and or subscriber ever. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, really help me and my channel out. That is all. Headset holder that has a little tub and I, I wanted to make this mainly because I usually have a lot of rubber bands sitting around.